Hi guys, it's Dark Age Week here on BeastsofWar.com and we have an amazing prize pool that must be won. First up, we have an amazing 1000 point 2 player star bundle for you and a mate to get into the game, including two 500 point armies, all the cards, tokens and templates you need to get into the game, and signed copies of the core rulebook and the Forsaken book. We then have seven starter sets up for grabs, also including a signed copy of the core rulebook. As if that wasn't enough prizes for you, our Beasts of War members are in with the chance of winning five amazing spot prizes from some of the coolest comments this week. Hi guys, welcome to Dark Age Week on Beast of War.com. Today we're having a look at the Brood. We're going to unbox them because we've had a look at the fluff and I really want to see what these guys look like in miniature form. So if you want to crack open the box, we get a look at these. Okay. So what are we getting in this starter set? Uh, in this starter set, um, we get uh, Mandible, mm -hmm. who is essentially acting as a leader in this uh, starting mm -hmm. group. Uh, we have... Brood hounds, two brood hounds in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three of the puds, mm -hmm. and we have some ratchets. And some ratchets. So if I put these there. under close camera, we'll get a quick look at the artwork. So mandible, is he a character? Is he sentient, or is he just following the orders of the brood mother? Uh, mandible is not a character. It is actually a specific type of a uh, genus, basically within the brood mm -hmm. that they engineer. And uh, well, like most things in Dark Age, it doesn't have a very happy backstory. Um, <laughs> It was basically a failed experiment that was left to die, mm -hmm. and as a means of self-preservation, mm. it kind of uh, force evolved these giant, nasty uh, razor clubs for arms, and also the ability to control nearby puds, which are kind of like the lowest of the low as far as brood goes. Okay. And that was such a success in that failure that the brood mirror has repeated that process several times over, creating this thing that basically can't survive on its own, mm. and forcing it to you know, uh, force evolve itself to uh -huh. recreate these things. I see, I see. All right, well, uh, we also have our brood hounds. <coughs> so I'm guessing another mutant experiment which has been left to die, or is this something that has been created after the fall? This was created after the fall by the brood mirror, specifically as a hunter and tracking uh, unit. Mm -hmm. These guys can infiltrate the battlefield and can get qu uh, places very quickly where other brood couldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, we then have the, the puds, which... Okay, I have to say, for a nightmarish little monster, they're kind of cute. <laughs> they're <laughs> adorable. Yeah, uh, I'll assume they're just a little harassment unit just to annoy your opponent? They're actually uh, deadly if they're ignored. Really? Um, well, it is just a, you know, a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth that has only one uh, goal. It's get there and eat. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll accept this. If I see them, I will kill them. Uh, next up, we have the Ratchets. Now, I'm guessing these are sort of your tanks for your starter faction. They're going to get up close and start hitting people? Well, the Brood does not really actually have a lot of uh, super high defense units. Mm. These are the basic foot troopers of the Brood. So as mm. you see, these guys are you know much larger than standard humans, but that's what you're getting with the Brood. Mm. The Brood, on average, are going to be between 8 to 10 feet tall, whereas you know humans are 6. Yeah. So with the Ratchets here, they don't have the best defense uh, mm. defensive stats at all. They've got two attacks on their offense, which is fairly nice. Mm -hmm. But they basically... Uh, you know, encompass what the brood stands for. Mm. Their weapons cause paralyzing effects and they've got that regeneration ability so they just keep getting back up. Mm. Okay, well, we'll have a look at Mandible under the close camera. Now, he's a single piece mini, which is something I always like. There's very little work to do, so if you're new to wargaming, this does look like it's gonna be the starter faction for you because you're not gonna have a lot of building or pinning or gluing with metal minis to do. That's correct. Uh, the sculpt itself is absolutely fantastic. It's it's a monster, what can I say? <laughs> it's, it's huge. Uh, we then have our, our little puds. And at the other end of the scale. At the other end of the scale. They're still really, really cute. <coughs> you know, I, I just imagine it just going... You know, just hearing this weird little growl across the battlefield. And it jumping up to bite your kneecap off. Yeah. Because, <laughs> of course, that's what a pud would do. Uh, we have another one here. We then have our Broodhounds. Again, single piece miniatures on everything in this. So I really, really like whenever a company is able to do that and get some really nice dynamic sculpts into the miniatures. Uh, we then have one of our Ratchets as well. And it is a very, very nice pose. Because there are times whenever you see companies, they'll go for a pose, right? And it's, it's that classic sword and board pose, knife and fork. I didn't mm -hmm. have that. Seeing these single piece, nice and dynamic, and god-awful on the battlefield? Sounds like a winner to me. 
Overall, what's this faction trying to do in its starter set? What's the main tactic you should look at? Well, the nice thing you have here, this is as far as like a scale of 1 to 10 on ease of play. I would rank these guys actually around a 9 or 10 because these guys are very forgiving in the fact that they regenerate. Mm. So you can push a guy up and overextend him and he will die. Um, but if your opponent doesn't have the resources or doesn't dedicate more to making sure he stays down, he'll just get back up. Mm. So you have that little bit of forgiveness in this force. Mm. This force is also very easy because everything here is melee oriented. Mm -hmm. um, the brood are fairly quick. Um, they give up the raw defensive stats mm -hmm. in favor of speed and the regenerative abilities that they yeah. have. Now, even now, I've played a couple of games of this by now, and what I'm actually seeing on Mandible, I want to show this off, on his stat line, he's got four actions. Normally that means you'll have a movement of two, but he's actually got the movement of three. So he's actually quite nippy, and once he gets into combat, he's got four attacks on you to really hammer at home. So I get the feeling he will really hurt once he gets there. Yep, the things to note is that each of his attacks he gets two attacks per action he spends, and he's got a defense of one, which mm -hmm. is the absolute lowest you can get in the game. Mm. Although, wow, the, the puds speedy. for one action are pretty damn quick. <laughs> uh, they move six <coughs> inches, but they only have the one action, so it's either move or bite. Or if they come in contact with you, it's a charge, so they get to do both. Ah, yes, and then they get their lovely, lovely bonuses. Um, this, the trade-off, though, is that Mandible's the only one here that can actually control them, so if they wander too far away from him, or if he dies, mm -hmm. then they will just go mindless and go near uh, toward the nearest enemy. Yeah, but I, I kind of like that because it's, it's like him just saying, come along, my little ones, come along, I'm, I'm <laughs> taking you to lunch today. It will be delicious. <laughs> uh, I have some painted versions of them here, so if I, if I call them up for us. So we're, here we have Mandible, the Broodhounds, and the Puds. I like these. I like this idea that they're chemically engineered super soldier weapon type things. Uh, I would maybe change the color scheme on the ratchets just to be a little more in keeping with the rest of them because they've got that, that white color to them. I think a nice camouflage green would look really good on them. But that's personal preference, so you can paint these any way you like. Yep. Uh, what about yourselves? Uh, if you were starting with this faction, how would you paint them up? Uh, I would actually probably take the same approach. Um, I would take either the deep camo or I would go completely opposite way and paint them. Um, actually, the first one of these I did paint myself were a bright yellow and purple. Ooh. Just completely stands out against the swamp background. Mm, nice. Really show off that whole kind of like toxic frog approach. Yeah, yeah. what about you, Dave? I'd go for um, probably a lot more um, sort of a tanned flesh mm. kind of uh, colors, working from those through to something, the, to, through to a deep green. Mm. So I'd yeah. want to have those two working that, together. That would be very cool. Although I know one thing, Warren keeps trying, and it doesn't really work, but I think it might work on these. He tries to get pearlescent paint to actually get that uh, scarred chitin color, you know, that black with the blue sheen through it, whenever you turn yeah. it and it hits the light. I think something like that might look really good on these. Well, I here. think so, yeah. Uh, I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of opportunities, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, here, I'll tell you what. Guys, drop us a comment below. How would you paint this faction, and are they tickling your fancy? Would this be the one for you? Drop us a comment below. We'll see you in the next video.